Thank you, listeners. We're back with you on the hotline. My friend and colleague, Dion Jackson Miller, who popped up in studio, she remains with me. I never missed the chance to pull her over. To have so draw a me out. Draw you out. out. It's important to do that. So, Tuesday gone, the parliament had a member it hadn't seen for a little while. I didn't see him, George Wright. Did you see him when he appeared in Parliament? I wasn't able to follow on Tuesday. There was something yeah. else I was doing. I didn't see him. I, I just saw heard. The, I saw the reports. Yeah. What do you, what do you make of that? Um. Hmm. <laughs> you see, Emily always has drawn you. Yes, man. Um, I think that, uh, as I think I was saying on BTH, this this is a very peculiar an unusual set of, of circumstances. I don't remember ever seeing anything like it before. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact is that if, as we've seen, if Mr. Wright decides he wants to remain on the benches until the election, mm -hmm. nobody can do nothing about it, mm -hmm. you know. I'm concerned. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm concerned about some of the calls I'm hearing mm -hmm. because uh, as a we have procedures to protect everybody. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what that means is that people who society may deem unworthy of the protection mm -hmm. are able to receive it. Mm -hmm. If we start, if we decide we want to put in place procedures and laws and codes mm -hmm. that will make it easy mm -hmm. to remove someone without no process. evidence, mm -hmm. what that means is that next year mm -hmm. or the year after, mm -hmm. you will have a very different situation. Absolutely. You will have somebody who deserves their seat on whichever bench it may be, mm -hmm. who is doing wonderful work and who is taken down, I use that word, that phrase, mm -hmm. because of whatever reason. Yes. Undeservedly, let's yeah. put it that way. Yes. And I think sometimes you have to suck up the one to protect the other. Yes. You're very right. The procedure. The procedure is important. And even for those against whom the allegations are most egregious, they have to feel that the process for their removal from whichever entity was fair. Yeah. I hear people talk sometimes about, you know, if uh, there has been a, an attempt to dismiss someone from a position that hasn't succeeded because proce procedure wasn't followed. And I hear people, oh, it's a technicality. And I say, you need mm -hmm. to understand the procedure is there to protect you mm -hmm. as well as to protect whoever may be before the panel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You want to know that if you are accused of something and mm -hmm. you believe that accusation is false, mm -hmm. that there is a, a robust procedure that protects you. Mm -hmm. And for me, that actually is the underlying issue here. Mm -hmm. I, I doubt we'll see this particular set of circumstances circumstances again but the fact of the matter is that in this case mm -hmm. the, the more important thing is that the procedure is there the procedure works and right. that people cannot be dismissed willy-nilly without evidence right right some people still say that what well, you know see the video even yesterday I saw a tweet from somebody who when I said I don't see no stool I don't see no stool in a video the person saying oh you don't see the stool you turn a blind eye I saw this this object. They have defined it to be a stool. God knows what this thing is. A simple thing like that, y y you know. Um, Daniel, yeah? you need to go outside and go look up on the sky because there must be a blue moon up there because me and Emily have start quarrel once yet. <laughs> what is this? Maybe it's because you had a birthday. When was it? I had a birthday the 9th. The 9th. Wednesday. So you are becoming wise, and which is why you start disagreeing with me. <laughs> and plus, I came out of COVID. I tell my friends I came out of COVID zen. You is know? it that? I'm zen. Is it that? Things that what I get so much anymore. Oh, well, welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> this is really a moment. Yeah. No, no, no. So yeah, the video was quite contentious. Um, but, and I suppose as well. Anyway, I'm not going to dwell on this <laughs> part too much. Let me hear you on this. These, let me see if really a blue moon out there. DT, <laughs> get ready to go outside. These phantom, phantom letters in Karen Cross's defense. Oh. Where are you? What you perhaps you? heard my what thoughts. No, I didn't. I was on the road, so perhaps I missed Well, since my thoughts are already known by the listeners, you uh -huh. tell me what you make of these letters that are there. 
in this defense that makes the allegations against Dayton Campbell? Um, I, I, I have a difficulty with the way in which it's, it, it's put forward to the public. Mm -hmm. um, the way in which it has been. Clearly it's been leaked to the public, we all know that. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a difficulty with the fact that not even the court, from what I understand, mm -hmm. knows who, who these people are. Um, that it's not a matter of, the, it, the, it's Emily, however Emily is on the age where they're for asking for her identity to be protected. Mm -hmm. The matter, as we know, it's a civil suit. It may not come for trial for another, what, three years? No, I'm getting matters now for 2026 in a street. <laughs> <laughs> really? I've heard 2023 for, no, no, for no, some no, criminal. No, 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 no. Okay. No, 2026 okay. for straight okay. ATV matters. Okay. If you're in commercial division, yeah. you may get a trial date in January of 2022 in the commercial division. But for straight civil, 2026. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I think... um. I was asking the children's advocate if there isn't a procedure by which the court can be asked to make some kind of order to Redact. force no force revelation of the names not for the not for the public but for the purposes of identification. No, well, that's interesting. An given, investigation, I should say, given yeah, given the concerns about the nature of the allegation. Yeah. Well, DT, you need to look up. There's a little blue moon. <laughs> Not on this last point, but on the first point you made. But on the last point, I am of the view that these so-called letters constitute absolute inadmissible hearsay. No, but you look at if, them and the, the mere fact, Emily, because yeah. when, when I first saw them, it, it was sent to the newsroom, and I first saw them, first, the first thing is that I couldn't understand why they would not be in the form of affidavit evidence. Not affidavits, yes. That, that's the very first thing. Yes. So that, for me, that, that, raised, a, that yes. raised a question. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it is completely inadmissible. Yeah. And at any rate, this, this defense, the defense is not evidence. As you said, it's not an affidavit. Plus, the stage of the proceedings that the matters have reached Witness statements have not yet been filed. And if witness statements are to be filed, then those letters would have to stand on their own as witness statements where the person has to disclose identity, address for the purposes of the witness statement, and to certify the truth of what is contained yes. in the witness statement, yes. which will stand as the evidence in chief in court yes. in the actual trial. So um, it is flawed procedurally for the civil for civil courts and for all matters of evidence which is why i think it's absolute blue moon time <laughs> on the hotline beyond is getting older and wiser and finally agreeing with my positions unknown to her <laughs> it's good to see you good to see you as always always